Then the Lord said to me, take a large tablet and write on it in common characters <clears throat> belonging to Meir Shalal Hashbaz and have it attested for me by reliable witnesses. The priests Uriah and Zechariah, son of Jeberahiah. And I went to the prophetess and she conceived and bore a son. Then the Lord said to me, Nahum Mahar Shael Hashbaz, for before the child knows how to call my father or my mother, the wealth of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria will be carried away by the king of Assyria. The Lord spoke to me again, because this people has refused the waters of Shaloah that flow gently and melt in fear before Rezin and the son of Remaliah. Therefore the Lord is bringing up against it the mighty flood waters of the river, the king of Assyria and all his glory. It will rise above all its channels and overflow its banks. It will sweep on into Judah as a flood and pouring over it will reach up to the neck and its outspread wings will fill the breath of your land, O Emmanuel. Band together, you peoples, and be dismayed. Listen, all you far countries, gird yourselves and be dismayed. Gird yourselves and be dismayed. Take counsel together, but it shall be brought to naught. Speak a word, but it will not stand, for God is with us. For the Lord spoke thus to me while his hand was strong upon me and warned me not to walk in the way of this people, saying, Do not call conspiracy all that this people calls conspiracy, and do not fear what it fears or be in dread. But the Lord of hosts, him you shall regard as holy, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. He will become a sanctuary, a stone one strikes against. For both houses of Israel he will be a, cop, a rock one stumbles over, a trap and a snare for the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble, they shall fall and be broken, they shall be snared and taken. Bind up the testimony, seal the teaching among my disciples. I will wait for the Lord who is hiding his face from the house of Jacob, and I will hope in him. See, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are signs and portents in Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells on Mount Zion. Now people say to you, consult the ghosts and the familiar spirits that chirp and mutter. Should not people consult their gods, the dead on behalf of the living, for teaching and for instruction? Surely those who speak like this will have no dawn. They will pass through the land greatly distressed and hungry. When they are hungry, they will be enraged and will curse their king and their gods. They will turn their faces upward. They will look to the earth, but will see only distress and darkness, the gloom of anguish, and they will be thrust into thick darkness. But there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the later time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest. As people exult when dividing plunder for the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned at fuel, as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The Lord sent a word against Jacob, and it fell on Israel, and all the people knew it. Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, but in pride and arrogance of heart, they said, The bricks have fallen, but we will build with dressed stones. The sycamores have been cut down, but we will put cedars in their place. So the Lord raised adversaries against them and stirred up their enemies, the Arameans on the east and the Philistines on the west, and they devoured Israel with open mouth. For all his anger has not turned away, his hand is stretched out still. The people did not turn to him who struck him or seek the Lord of hosts. So the Lord cut off from Israel head and tail, palm branch and reed in one day. Elders and dignitaries are the head and prophets who teach lies are the tail. For those who led this people led them astray and those who were led by them were left in confusion. 
That is why the Lord did not have pity on their young people or compassion on their orphans and widows. For everyone was godless and an evildoer, and every mouth spoke folly. For all this his anger has not turned away, his hand is stretched out still. For wickedness burned like a fire, consuming briars and thorns. It kindled the thickets of the forest, and they swirled upon in a col- upward in a column of smoke. Through the wrath of the Lord of hosts, the land was burned, and the people became like fuel for the fire. No one spared another. They gorged on the right, but still were hungry, and they devoured on the left, but were not satisfied. They devoured the flesh of their own kindred. Manasseh devoured Ephraim, and Ephraim Manasseh, and together they were against Judah. For all this, his anger has not turned away. His hand is stretched out still. Ah, you who make iniquitous decrees, who write oppressive statutes, to turn aside the needy from justice and to rob the poor of my people of their right, that widows may be your spoil and that you make the orphans your prey. What will you do on the day of punishment in the calamity that will come from far away? To whom will you flee for help and where will you leave your wealth? so as not to crouch among the prisoners or fall among the slain. For all this his anger has not turned away, his hand is stretched out still. Ah, Assyria, the rod of my anger, the club in their hands is my fury. Against a godless nation I send him, and against the people of my wrath I command him to take spoil and seize plunder and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. But this is not what he intends, nor does he have this in mind but it is in his heart to destroy and to cut off nations, not a few. For he says, are my commanders all kings? Is not Calno like Carchemish? Is not Hamath like Arpad? Is not Samaria like Damascus? As my hand has reached to the kingdoms of the idols whose images are greater than those of Jerusalem and Samaria, shall I not do to Jerusalem and her idols what I've done to Samaria and her images? When the Lord has finished all his work on Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, he will punish the arrogant boasting of the king of Assyria and his haughty pride. For he says, By the strength of my hand I have done it, and by my wisdom, for I have understanding. I have removed the boundaries of peoples and have plundered their treasures like a bull. I have brought down those who sat on thrones. My hand has found like a nest the wealth of the peoples, and as one gathers eggs that have been forsaken, so I have gathered all the earth, and there was none that moved a wing or opened its mouth or chirped. Shall the axe vaunt itself over the one who wields it, or the saw magnify itself against the one who handles it? As if a rod should raise the one who lifts it up, or as if a staff should lift the one who is not wood. Therefore the sovereign, the Lord of hosts, will send wasting sickness among his stout warriors, and under his glory a burning will be kindled, like the burning of fire. The light of Israel will become a fire, and his holy one a flame, and it will burn and devour his thorns and briars in one day. The glory of his forest and his fruitful land, the Lord will destroy both soul and body, and it will be as when an invalid wastes away. The remnant of the trees of his forest will be so few that a child can write them down. On that day, the remnant of Israel and the survivors of the house of Jacob will be no, will no more lean on the one who struck them, but will lean on the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. A remnant will return the remnant of Jacob to the mighty God. For though your people Israel were like sand of the sea, only a remnant of them will return. Destruction is decreed overflowing with righteousness. For the Lord God of hosts will make a full end as decreed in all the earth. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of hosts, O my people who live in Zion, do not be afraid of the Assyrians when they beat you with a rod and lift up their staff against you as the Egyptians did. For in a very little while my indignation will come to an end and my anger will be directed to their destruction. The Lord of hosts will wield a whip against them as when he struck Midian at the rock of Oreb. His staff will be over the sea and he will lift it as he did in Egypt. On that day, his burden will be removed from your shoulder and his yoke will be destroyed from your neck. He has gone up from Rimon. He has come up from Ayath. He has passed through Migron at Michmash. He stores his baggage. They have crossed over the pass. At Giba, they lodge for the night. Rima trembles. Gibeah of Saul has fled. Cry aloud, O daughter Galim. Listen, O Laisha. Answer her, O Anathoth, 
Madmia is in flight. The inhabitants of Gabim flee for safety. The very day he will halt at Nob, he will shake his fist at the mountain, at the Mount of Daughter Zion, the hill of Jerusalem. Look, the sovereign, the Lord of hosts, will lop the boughs with terrifying power. The tallest trees will be cut down and the lofty will be brought low. He will hack down the thickets of the forest with an axe and Lebanon with its majestic trees will fall. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples, the nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. On that day, the Lord will extend his hand yet a second time to recover the remnant that is left of his peoples from Assyria, from Egypt, from Parthos, from Ethiopia, from Elam, from Shinar, from Hamath, and from the coastlands of the sea. He will raise a signal for the nations and will assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The jealousy of Ephraim shall depart. The hostility of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not be jealous of Judah, and Judah shall not be hostile towards Ephraim. They shall but swoop down on the backs of the Philistines in the west. Together they shall plunder the people of the east. They shall put forth their fan hand against Edom and Moab, and the Ammonites shall obey them. And the Lord will utterly destroy the tongue of the sea of Egypt, and will wave his hand over the river with his scorching wind, and will split it into seven channels, and make a way across to cross on foot so that there shall be a highway from Assyria from the remnant that is left of his people as there was for Israel when they came up from the land of Egypt. <laughs>